Hi there, Dr. Terry Shanefeld for UAB School of Medicine. Concealed allocation is often confused by readers of randomized controlled trials with blinding. In this video, I'll discuss what concealed allocation is and how it's carried out, and we'll also discuss how concealed allocation is critical to maintaining the integrity of the randomization process. So let's say you want to do a study to figure out if a blue pill is better than a red pill at preventing death. And the best way to do a therapeutic study is to do a randomized controlled trial. So you would randomize patients to a blue pill and a red pill, and you'd have an equal distribution of prognostic factors between those on the blue pill and the red pill. But what if you were a clinician or a researcher, and you had your a next patient who potentially could be in this study, and you were really concerned about them, they were very sick, and you wanted to make sure they got the blue pill. And let's really consider that you could figure out the randomization scheme. You could know what's coming next, whether a blue pill would be assigned next or a red pill, and you hold this patient out so that they get the blue pill. Now, what problem could there be with that? Well, that's where allocation concealment comes in. Now, randomization is great at equally distributing prognostic factors, but it can be overcome, or the benefits of randomization can be overcome if proper allocation concealment is not done. So what is allocation concealment? Well, it's not disclosing to patients or to those enrolling people in the trial the allocation or randomization sequence. And this differs from blinding when we think about double blinding in a study because blinding occurs after randomization. It's not letting the researchers or the patients know what treatment they're on after randomization. So you can think of allocation concealment as pre-randomization blinding. You're blinding the randomization scheme and traditional blinding is post-randomization blinding. Now why is allocation concealment important? Well it's important because if you have inadequate allocation concealment, you can overestimate treatment effects by up to 40%. You can make your treatment look better than it really is. Now, the other thing it does is help to avoid selection bias. And selection bias here is a little bit different than we think of in a case control study. But selection bias here is systematic differences between patients who recruited to a trial and those who were not recruited. So that the trial population is not representative of the patient population. And that may be the case because you can figure out randomization, you hold patients out, and you only put certain patients in the study into certain treatments. It also helps avoid allocation bias, and allocation bias is systematic differences between participants in how they were randomized to treatment. And here it's because you can figure out the, the randomization scheme, so you put patients that have different prognoses into one arm of the study or another because you want them to get a certain treatment. So how do you know if there's adequate allocation concealment? Well, there's certain things you can look for. One of them is sequentially numbered opaque sealed envelopes. So the envelopes all have a number on it. When the next patient comes up, you grab the next numbered envelope. It's opaque so that you can't see through it and figure out what the randomization scheme is. And it's sealed so that you can't open it prior to enrolling the patient. Often pharmacies will control randomization, so once you enroll a patient, you call into the pharmacy and they disclose the randomization of that individual patient. Probably the most commonly done thing is calling into a central randomization center or the study center, and the central center will tell you um, which arm of the trial your patient is randomized to. Importantly, just use your clinical judgment. Does it look like the randomization scheme could be broken? If not, then you can be um, assured that adequate concealed randomization was probably done. So let's test your knowledge and see if you understand concealed allocation. Pause the video for a minute, select these answers that you think are true, and then restart the video to see your answer. So let's see how you did. So these two answers are correct.